Hey guys, how's it going? Tez back again with another episode of the World Cup Squad Series here on my channel and of course on random FIFA videos as well. So if you're watching over there, feel free to leave the video a like and if you did enjoy and you'd like to see more from me, then there will be a link in the description to my channel. So if you'd like to come subscribe over there, I'd be more than willing to have you along. But uh, if you're new to this series, what we basically do is we're going through each of the teams that have qualified for the Brazil 2014 World Cup. We uh, we throw together a team of uh, individuals from that specific nation. We go through it group by group and uh, this is actually the final one in Group B and uh, the team isn't necessarily uh, a select 11 that will be going to the uh, the World Cup it's just a squad of 11 players that I've thrown together and uh, it's not too much about the squad as uh, as a whole for the video it's more about going through the individual nations World Cup history of course standout players for uh, for Spain would be in every position I've got a couple of informs in there inform uh, Daniel Carver Howe at right back, of course, recently become informed for Real Madrid, and second informed Pedro at left wing, who was a particularly good player. And then you've got the the obvious players like uh, Iniesta, Xavi, Sergio Ramos, Jordi Alba, etc. But uh, let's move away from the squad. Then let's concentrate on uh, what we're here for, which is of course the history of Spain in the World Cups. Now, of course, we all know Spain as uh, the Spanish national side of today as uh, one of the best in the world, if not the best. They've maintained a ridiculously high level of performance over the past six or seven years or so since. Spain basically Euro 2008 but uh, that current trend however is their only run of real success in uh, in world football their first appearance at a world cup in 1934 was uh, was actually a decent one though they did reach the quarter finals of uh, the second ever world cup but uh, it, you know that was decent but then they had to wait another 16 years before they were they were at the uh, at the world cup again before they next qualified and they actually bettered that performance at brazil 1950 they actually finished fourth in the overall tournament but again after that it was another big wait before they got back to the world stage 12 years they had to wait before they actually were able to uh, to play in a world cup finals again and uh, this time it wasn't as good as before they actually exited in the group stage in both 62 and 66 so of course that was very very disappointing and it was yet another group stage failure in 1978 which was the next time that they qualified for the tournament but at least after that they didn't have to wait another decade or more to uh, to have another crack at the World Cup. Since 1978 they've qualified for every single tournament. Every four year rotation they've been at the World Cup which is of course very very good. It's consistent at least for, uh, for them. It's a progression from the 1930s moving through to the modern day they've uh, progressively qualified more and more regularly and of course as we've said have qualified for every single tournament between now and then they slowly improved through the 80s and 90s of course with the uh, the two group exits in 62 64 they would have wanted to uh, to do that and uh, they actually qualified for two quarterfinals again in 1986 and in 1994 although they were still played by inconsistency those two uh, last eight uh, kind of qualification tournaments uh, were actually sandwiched by more round of 16 second round uh, exits and of course more group stage planes home in more most notably the most recent of which was uh, was France 98 so when we move out of the 80s and 90s into the uh, what you might say the modern day into the the noughties and uh, in 2002 at Japan and Korea they did get to another quarter final and perhaps actually deserve to get to a semi final if you remember uh, if you cast your mind back just over 10 years or so they uh, they played the uh, the co-host South Korea in a quarter final and had two goals very controversially disallowed one inside the uh, the normal time of 90 minutes and then another one in extra time before the South Koreans actually ran out winners on penalties before of course they were uh, were defeated by Germany in in the in the semi-finals and of course Germany went on to lose to Brazil in the, in the final overall but 2006 brought with it another disappointing tournament they uh, they got past the group stage which is decent enough but with the the sort of players at their disposal players like Raul Fernando Hierro etc they would have really wanted to get past the uh, the first knockout round but unfortunately they were defeated by Spain 3-1 in the uh, in the knockout round and it was after that tournament that Spanish football really kind of kicked into gear and it had its finest hour their quote unquote golden generation was born into life they uh, they kind of adapted the dutch total football style that uh, we we covered in the previous episode we did cover of course the netherlands in uh, the previous week but uh, they adopted the total football and perhaps even improved on it and they created the tikka taka style of play which has just been world renowned for its ability and its effectiveness and uh, the fact that Spain and Barcelona have adopted that style more so than anyone else and they've been so ridiculously successful with it over the past six or seven years. 
And as we move closer to uh, to the current time, of course, the uh, the most recent World Cup in South Africa 2010 is uh, the one that they went into it as firm favourites, having beaten uh, everyone else in Europe in Euro 2008 in Switzerland and come out winners of that. And uh, they really didn't disappoint as the favourites of the tournament. Even though early on they suffered a setback, they of course lost their first group game 1-0 to Switzerland. But uh, they grew from strength to strength throughout the tournament from that point on. And uh, finally, of course, won their first ever World Cup with uh, that slim 1-0 extra time win over... Over, uh, over last week's team, the Netherlands, that we covered uh, last week, in what was probably actually one of the most hot-headed finals of all time. Of course, it was refereed by, uh, by our own, our England's own, uh, Howard Webb, and Spain actually picked up five bookings, and the Dutch picked up nine and a red card, which is, is actually the uh, the highest total of cards in World Cup history. So uh, it definitely was a hot-headed final. And they continued that good form in Euro 2012 as well, of course, retaining their European trophy. But will they continue to dominate world football next summer? Honestly, I do not know because, of course, their performance in the final of the 2013 Confederations Cup against Brazil might suggest otherwise. Of course, it was a very tired team that played against Brazil in uh, back in January, was it? 2013, January, February, it was be- at the beginning of the year at least. Uh, they, they struggled. They kind of eased through to the final, but not against any uh, particularly difficult opposition. And then, uh, of course, Brazil and Neymar absolutely pounded them. And Fred, in fact, picking up two, got man in the match card as well on FIFA, absolutely battered them in the final. So whether they'll be able to, uh, to retain their World Cup trophy like they did the European trophy I honestly would not be able to tell you but they'll definitely progress through the group stage you'd have to say that with teams such as the Netherlands Chile and Australia uh, having been uh, been drawn in their group you'd have to say that they're going to uh, ease through that group Spain and Holland will be a very very interesting game to watch but you would presume that they uh, just glide through the uh, the group stage probably coming out winners as well but that Spain are our final uh, final team to cover from Group B so we'll, next week we'll move on to Group C but uh, some miscellaneous facts from uh, from the uh, the Spanish national team just to round things off of course they're currently number one in the world on uh, the FIFA rankings and have been since October 2011 and uh, basically have been on and off since around about 2007 so uh, they've been a very very strong side in uh, in recent years easily easily the best team in the world for the uh, that period but of course you've got the Brazilian side coming strong now the Germans are never to be written off so uh, whether they'll be able to hold that uh, hold that trophy down we do not know but their top goal scorer is David Villa with 56 goals which is a fantastic return and he's definitely one of uh, Spain's all-time best players regardless of the amount of goals he's uh, put away for his country and of course the most caps held again is a goalkeeper is Ike Casillas with 152 and you would presume that Casillas is going to be the uh, the keeper that they go to the tournament with as their number one but I'm sure Victor Valdez and uh, David De Gea will have something to say about that perhaps even Pepe Reina doing well at Napoli but uh, that is going to bring this particular week's uh, week's showcase to a close thank you very much for watching please do feel free to leave the video a like if you could be so kind and of course if you did enjoy feel free to subscribe to my channel there will be links to do so in the description but uh, that's going to bring this one to a close so thank you very much for watching guys and I will see you next time